onda banda? ¿Cómo están? Soy Beto Hermida y hoy estamos de manteles largos. Tenemos aquí a los señores de Apocalíptica, están de visita en nuestro país una vez más y están dando un montón de shows eh, en varias ciudades de la, de, del país y pues nos han concedido su tiempo para platicar un poco de toda esta aventura que ha sido esta gira. Guys, Apocalyptica, thank you guys for giving me some of your time and for being uh, back again in Mexico with us. We're very happy to have you. Um, you guys been, have been several times in Mexico before, as long as I can remember throughout your 30 plus years of career. So uh, what was really interesting for me is that this time I saw you guys were touring a lot of cities that are not very uh, usually toured. And that I thought that was great because uh, some, of pe so, some people of those cities are not able to get to the major cities sometimes. So it was great. Please tell me, guys, how you felt maybe the diversity of these cities and being such a big country, all different kind of uh, style of people and everything. How do you guys feel? You know, first time we came here to Mexico in 1998 or something like that. So we've been around quite a while over here. Uh, since even for the first time we really felt really good here in Mexico and somehow that Mexican mentality fits pretty well for the Finnish people and, uh, and uh, normally we have had the shows in Mexico City, Guadalajara, Monterrey, that's a typical yes. to play the show but this is the first time we play 15 shows yes. all around Mexico and we were quite mm, wondering Would it be possible? And yes. how would it happen? But this has been turning, turning out fantastic and really good, a good show, sold out shows and a lot of people and, and we have had a good, really good time. Yeah, we were really well aware about like the people know us abroad, Mexico. I would say that uh, this is our greatest audience in here. So that's Absolutely, and I'm not even kidding because the, the love is just so strong. So we feel really welcome, really home in Mexico always. And this time we really wanted to do, like you said, to go to the untypical, more uh, untypical cities to bring the music in there because apparently it is possible. And we have really enjoyed the life in here for a month now, and uh, we should do it again, uh, definitely. Like, uh, and today in Puebla, I'm very excited. Wow, that's amazing. And I, I honestly believe that I saw you guys back my, myself. I saw you guys back in 2004. You guys came here with, uh, uh, to Mexico City with Mudvayne and uh, Korn and Marlon Manson. So I, I was in that show. So really? yeah, I'm pretty aware that how, how much have you toured here? And you can actually see the results because the Mexican people actually love Apocalyptica and it's, it's an honor to have you guys. And uh, your last album, guys, that I, that I listened to, and it, it was amazing, this uh, Live in Helsinki at the St. John's Church. Um, for me, it was an experience because I never expected the album to open that way and then to go through like it went through. It was, that's something I really like personally about Apocalyptica and the audience that uh, was sending us the questions to ask you guys. They agree that you guys have this peculiar way of... Uh, sort of being you but but switching a little bit between uh, wherever you guys are and adapting and uh, how, what how was the experience of, of touring churches um, <clears throat> as you know normally apocalyptica shows um, are like a rock shows in the rock Viennese but as you know from our history we have not now done like a nine studio albums yeah. and uh, there's a lot of songs which are not that rock or heavy there's all the mellow and beautiful songs and many times those songs are not fitting to the uh, rock uh, set list uh, for the rock shows and that's why we wanted to create a kind of concept and uh, it was mainly also because of the pandemic times that we were not able to travel around but at some points there were blocks that in finland you were able to play concerts like With three meters, whatever, <laughs> safety distances yeah. and stuff. But the concept was created during the uh, COVID wow. time. And uh, it felt so good that we actually redid it then in the next year also. 
And I think uh, one of the coolest things in our band is the versatility that we are able to actually do these things, to go into the sweaty rock clubs, playing more sophisticated classical yeah. uh, concert halls or churches even, and uh, or these kind of beautiful places as we now toured in uh, theaters and stuff like that, uh, the opera houses in yeah. Mexico. And so uh, one of the really, really good uh, chances in the band is that we can go everywhere and find different types <laughs> of audience and everybody seems to find something that they do like in our music. So, but these shows now in Mexico, this has been like a rock shows. Yeah. And uh, kind of, we are quite, quite sad because these are, we have only three more left. Yes. And um, that's the kind of end of era of Cell Zero. So, it's, yeah. It, it was an honor to, to have you guys do like a leg of a tour. Like uh, Mexican bands, it's kind of hard for us to, to do a big tour in, uh, across Mexico because of course there's places to go play. But uh, Mexico was kind of different than Europe. There's no, uh, not uh, a lot of big crowds to attend to shows uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So it's more in the weekends. So for me, it was amazing to see that Apocalyptica could play on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, on a Thursday in different places. And I wanted to ask you guys, were you aware, I believe you are, that Mexico has a lot of churches? So it would be amazing if you guys could have the idea revolving around to do like the church touring. But across Mexico, we have the Obispado in Monterrey. Uh, Puebla has more than 300 churches. So some big ones, some small ones. So it would be a, an amazing concept. Or I don't know if you were aware of that. That would be really great in the future after a couple of years. And uh, I'm just wondering if those churches are like uh, liberal enough yeah. <laughs> to get, let us in. You know, the Finnish uh, the religion in Finland, it's Lutheric and it's really kind of modern of course. religion. And um, it's really open for, you know, many different kind of modern things. Okay. As an, um, it's even in, in, even in Germany, it's quite old fashioned and oh, okay. ca Catholic. Yeah. So, we are more than happy if some, uh, some church will call us and, and ask for a show. Would be, it would be interesting. Yeah, because that we always, even we are metal band, we, we did these co church concerts such a way that it's, it's like persuading the, the church and people's opinions and religion. So Oops. there is no, you know, that kind of. Yeah, of course. And, uh, also, guys, I was uh, checking your la your last single you released was uh, back in December, right, with uh, Elise Reed, and it was an amazing song. And uh, I was thinking throughout your career, you guys have uh, done a lot of different tracks with a, a lot of different singers, with a lot of different styles. From I don't know Corey Taylor, Till Lindemann, uh, Simon Simmons, uh, I don't know Le Lizzie Hale, for example, and it's something that the audience wanted to ask, personally, me as well. How do you guys work through the process of a song when you are collaborating with someone? Either you guys have the song and you just invite the singer or you do it together. Could, would you mind telling us a little bit more about that? Well, it has really changed with, with all the songs. The story might be a little bit different. For example, it might begin from a friendship alone. For example, Elise and Simona. They are good examples of friends with whom we just wanted to work with and then finding a right song for their voices. But also, we have been approached by some vocalists that, hey, dude, I would one, one day want to make a track with you. Or it could be like a great idea that, okay, let's do a cover of David Bowie's Heroes. And the most amazing would be to have Lindemann there. Like, so usually there is always a personal connection to the artist that we work with. Of course, sometimes they can be recommendations from uh, record labels or stuff like that. But uh, I think it's so freaking cool that we have had the chance to work with amazing artists. And uh, who knows what the future will bring. That's part of the beauty of, about music, I guess. And so, guys, what, what is uh, in the near future for Apocalyptica? What can we expect this 2024? We are seeing the pandemic 
back and back and back. So we're we're in New Year's now. We are uh, thankful that we are here. So what's next for Apocalyptica? What can we expect? This, uh, this will be a big year for us. We are going to release an album in the summer, and uh, so stay tuned. The information might be actually already out when this interview comes, but uh, okay. we need to be very, very yeah. discreet at the moment still, because uh, I think the reveal will be next week, one okay. week after this interview, and then you will hear more about the concept. So next week, listen to that. It would be great to have you guys again with, uh, with whatever departs uh, to the future for Apocalyptica, and hopefully Mexico will be included in your uh, new adventures. So thank you guys, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for being here. And Banda Desvelada, estamos aquí con Apocalyptica y no se duerman. <laughs>